Hello and well, welcome back for another video. In this video, I'm going to show you a theory which I had in my mind for a long time ago. But then I put it in practice just to see if it works. We're going to go from images like this to this. It's a very easy approach. So nonetheless, stick around and I'll show you. Those who are new, my name is Bakhtin again. I'm an Amarai with Alfred. In my channel, I'm coming things from basic to advanced Amarai topics, tutorials just like this one. If you haven't subscribed yet, considering doing so. So in this video, I'm not going to show you how I scan it on the scanner. I'm going to show you the results because from theory to practice, I didn't believe it would work. But I did try with multiple um, of my colleagues to try it out to see, and even myself to see how it work. And um, the thing about this is we all know that in an examination, for example, shoulder or whatever, knee or head or, or spine, we know that protocol is just a part of the whole package, right? So the important also part is that patient positioning, patient information, patient preparation, the safety and all that. And today we're going to talk about patient positioning. So without further ado, I will show you the results. So this was done on a 3T, but I strongly believe it will work on 1.5. Uh, it was a Siemens scanner, so it doesn't matter because I would think it will work on every other vendors as well. So as you can see in front of me here, this is just a T1 where the two has been echo corner. And as you can see, we are using the Ultraflex 18 channel lodge. So in this case, I was using that, but I will also show you the dedicated uh, shoulder cord later in my presentation right here. This is very common. You can see there's motion artifacts or breathing artifacts here, right? Which is going right, left. So that means that the patient didn't lie still, it's breathing heavily, and you get this artifact. So what you can do is that you can, uh, this is physical right and left, as I told you. What you can do is shift the facet coding. However, if you do that, you only shift the problem in the other direction, in this case, head feet direction. So what we did here is that we had the face encoding direction right left, as you can see. On this image, there's a minimal of motion artifact. It's the same, same test patient with this theory of mine put into practice. You either eliminate it or minimize it very much. This is a very common um, positioning. You have the shoulder coil, the patient is lying inside the shoulder coil, in this case for the right shoulder, and behind there is just some cushion and the patient is lying flat, right? So these two images was done like this, which is standard routine, is what everybody taught me when I was starting with MRI. So the next one I will show you is that in this image, we are putting some cushion behind it, so we would now have the patient is not lying straight, it's lying a little bit oblique. There are two things which is good about that. One thing is that the patient is sliding uh, towards the coil even more, so it's closer to the coil. Other thing is that if you put some cushion, a uh, soft cushion behind it, and then you lift your, your thorax a little bit, and you, you're lying a little bit oblique. But remember the extension of the hand, right, because of the supraspinatus and the, the anatomy. Remember that. Uh, however, I also felt when I was inside the scanner that it was easier to breathe. It's not that that heavy breathing, which isn't causing artifacts. So, lifting the the thorax area a little bit up away from the table was much easier for the breathing uh, cautious. So, nonetheless, I did a test on my colleague here. So, further on, I did another test. This is another colleague of mine. So now we have a dedicated shoulder 60 channel. So it's a large coin. And we are using the standard routine in phase and going right left. So it's again a tubus with echo T world. As you can see here, whenever on, on this test person, he was lying flat here, a little bit oblique here. But the first look, it looks like, hmm, it's not that bad, right? What you usually get. But if you enhance the window level a little bit here, you can see that there are some motions here. And it's much, much less here. Even though it's not the same slice uh, here, but you can see Motions like this will go through the images even though you scroll through it and uh, works. It seems like that. So we also did another test uh, on, uh, I think this was my shoulder. I'm not quite sure. I think so, but it's one of these are uh, my shoulders. Uh, I just want to lie in and test out how the patient is lying, how comfortable, uncomfortable it can be, what we can do to adjust it, to make it more comfortable. As you can see here, without doing any further uh, enhancement of the images window level you can see there are some motions here and these motions will go through the images even though you're not seeing it quite easily here on T1 on PD facts and so on you would see it much much easier 
and it's less here. There are some, like I said, I couldn't eliminate it totally on, on, on myself, but of course I minimize it. It was more, and it was more comfortable lying inside the scan as well. Well, as I said, guys, I hope you find this video valuable. This was just some theory put into practice. I know there's a lot of focus on, on the sequences, on the parameter settings, but it's not always about that. So also keep in mind that this patient positioning, patient preparation is extremely important and also safe. Nonetheless, I do have a question for you before we close up. Do you know about this technique? If so, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, do not forget to push the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell so you get a ding ding whenever new videos for me are coming up. Until next video, take care and I see you around. Peace out.